Hey, I am Ollie Matthews, the guy behind OJ Health. And today I'm going to take you through a presentation called The Sleep Solution. How to easily drop weight, boost your energy, and learn to make sleep problems a thing of the past. Let me get this. Hopefully this is all recording properly. But yeah, how to easily drop weight, boost your energy, and make sleep problems a thing of the past. There are three simple steps that we're going to be looking at through this. But first off, just let me just tell you a little bit about who I am. Now, I'm a nutrition therapist, meaning that we actually use nutrition in order to help your body do what it needs to do, to improve your health, to improve your energy, to improve your brain function, to get your digestion right, and to use nutraceutical supplements if needed to help you with your stress management along with lifestyle factors like managing your stress. So I'm a functional medicine healthcare provider I am a personal trainer, I'm a best-selling author, and there's a story about why I do what I do. You see, I was working with many, many clients over the years. I've been in this industry since 2006. Yeah, 2006, mid-2006, so literally been in here for 16 years, um, coming up to 17 nearly. And... I've worked with many people all over the world. In fact, clients in 26 different countries that I can remember working with. And I used to work with people on body transformations, going deeper into specifically with the um, personal training side of things, rather than looking at their health on a deeper level. And I worked with professional athletes, getting them from A to B as fast as possible. Someone that had been in the Tour de France, uh, Rio Olympics consultations were happening and it was great working with these professional endurance athletes, but the focus wasn't on health. And then I started working with some entrepreneurs. Uh, and this one guy, as you can see in this picture, is Rick Barker. And he messaged me and said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I know what to do. I need you to tell me to do it. And I thought, okay, great. Let's get on a call. And I looked at his website and wondered, why is Taylor Swift's manager messaging me? And this is Rick Barker, the guy that helped launch Taylor Swift's career back in 2008, he was her first manager. And I started working with him three months later, um, in his kitchen with his wife, his kids, and he's standing there and he says, look, you've given my wife back what she married 10 years ago. And his 13 year old son was there, 15 year old daughter. And it really gave me goosebumps because when I was 15, my dad was super, super stressed. He was um, running holiday parks here in the UK and hitting his targets, smashing it, taking a park from nothing to something, doing really well at what he'd done. But there were signs of stress. He was getting migraines. Now, he wasn't overweight, as you can see from this picture. He didn't drink loads. He just was stressed. And he was getting these migraines, and he went into hospital when he was 47 years old. He was on a course. On the Monday, he went into hospital with a migraine. Then he had a stroke. And on the Saturday, we had to turn off his life support machine. He passed away at 47. I was 15. And I couldn't help my dad do what he was doing um, with his health. But now, all these years later, I'm 36 now, I'm helping people all around the world, just like Rick, just like yourself, manage stress and manage their body to get it functioning the way it needs to function, to stop kids from losing their parents too early. And it has really become a passion of mine. So we're going to go through sleep and what the biggest thing is that's going to make you improve your sleep, uh, or the three biggest things that are happening with your sleep that we can improve on. Because as far as health goes, if we get good sleep, we are getting good foundations for the rest of our health. Now, what happens when we struggle to sleep? Well, we start seeing brain fog. We start seeing that you have very low energy. There's more cravings that happen. Uh, your immune system becomes lower. You start getting sick more. You start getting tired. And then there are lowered moods and drive. We just end up that we've not got the motivation that we had. Bad skin, bad hair health. We have poor gut health. We start getting more bloated. Our digestion isn't as great as it could be. And we get lowered sex drive. And even then, like if weight loss is one of your goals, it becomes harder and harder to lose weight. So there are three things that we look at when it comes to sleep and people improving their sleep, what they're actually doing and how we can then get around these and their specific problems. So the first problem that we have is that people struggle to get to sleep. 
they literally lay there counting sheep in the evening and they just can't get to sleep they can't switch off it's like they're tired they're tired they're tired their head hits a pillow and then boom welcome brain you have just woken up and they're another one where people struggle to stay asleep they're waking up every two three hours to go to the toilet and just heads up it's not because you're getting old and the third one is that they're waking up feeling knackered they literally have to run for the coffee and they're not human until they have that coffee first thing in the morning now let's look at the first one struggling to get to sleep now this can be certain things that are going on. There's excess inflammation within the body, which is a bit more of a technical term. It could be your mental health, and it can also be behavioral. And this is where we look deeper into what is actually going on. But if you have a good body clock, if you have good circadian rhythm, you should be sleepy before you're actually going to bed. If you're not getting sleepy in the evening, then something else is going on, which is where we want to look deeper into it. And that's where we look at, are you self-sabotaging your sleep? Because so many people are without realizing. They're on their phone before bed. Now, that is not just going to be screen time where it's blue light exposure. Even with filters, there are other lights that we need to filter out. But that is potentially going to be stressful. It's going to be a dopamine hit. All these things are going to keep your brain awake. Are we using TVs? Are we on the computer before bed? Are we eating the wrong food, junk food before bed, which is throwing our blood glucose levels off? Are we having alcohol? Now, um, no one gets good sleep when drinking alcohol. No one. People knock themselves out, but nobody gets good sleep when they're drinking alcohol. And then we end up on this stimulant roller coaster that we need to get stimulants in the morning to wake us up then we need it to kick us up and uh, kick us going in the afternoon then we need downers to get to sleep we end up taking sleeping pills and we end up up and down up and down up and down all the time we have alcohol then we get stressed and we have medication to get to sleep and this is a vicious circle that we end up being on now as i said no one gets good sleep when they have alcohol we should have this certain rhythm that our body clock has. Now, cortisol is a stress hormone. It should be high in the morning to wake us up. But our body isn't really working like this because it's so out of sync with daily rhythms and daily routines and the exposures to daylight and everything like that. Then in the evening, we have this sleep hormone called melatonin, which takes about five hours to build up from your actual normal bedtime. So actually going to sleep at different times, waking up at different times, our body can't regulate when it's going to have a cortisol high and when it's going to have a melatonin high. And not only that, if we break that rhythm, that five hours buildup of melatonin to get to its peak when we should feel really tired at like 10, 11 p.m., if we have this cortisol hit, it blunts that melatonin and we have to start that all over again. It's a very vicious circle to be in. Now, we see this all the time. We see people having afternoon coffees. We see people having excess screen time. We see more and more stresses which are boosting that cortisol and throwing off your melatonin levels. Now, that's where we need to look at. When people struggle to get to sleep, is it going to be information in the body? Is it behavior? Which is a hard conversation to have with yourself. And there's the mental, the anxiety side of things. And this is where we need to look at those behavioral things and give this honest audit about what is going on before bed and we look at that um in the sleep solution we look at like how do people actually get to sleep how do they wake up and those things are pivotal in actually getting a good night's sleep then we struggle to stay asleep so you have things like you're waking after a few hours or you're waking between 3 and 5 a.m you're thinking it's just because you're needing the toilet and you're getting old it's not so we have a thing called glucose which is sugar, blood glucose management. We have a certain amount of sugar in our blood. Now, a lot of people link this with just diabetics. And I think, oh, blood glucose isn't an issue unless I'm diabetic. But we see many problems with glucose in our day-to-day -day society, brain fog that's happening. We have highs in sugar levels. Then we have dips in sugar levels because our management is just poor. Now, what happens is that when we can't stay asleep, and we've had this poor diet throughout the day, we get this little dip in blood glucose. Now, your brain fuels primarily off of glucose. So when we have this dip, your brain needs to have more glucose and know that glucose is coming. 
So it releases the stress hormone that we said actually comes up earlier in the morning, cortisol. And when it releases cortisol, its prime function is to boost your glucose levels. So there's this signal like your brain is running low. It needs to send a signal to your adrenals to boost cortisol to then go back up and have blood sugar levels boosted. So it has fuel. Now, the trouble is when it does this during the night, it's usually when we're going through a process of getting toxins out of the body and needing to go to the toilet, we think. But it's actually that we don't wake ourselves up to go to the toilet. We wake ourselves up because we have poor blood glucose management. And at the same time where your body could stay and not need the toilet because it could stay asleep, you think, oh, I need the toilet now. And it's hard to then get back to sleep. So why is your blood glucose imbalanced? We can have poor food. People are having so much processed food, so much unreal food. Their digestion isn't working as effectively as it could do. Uh, then we have stress. People are highly stressed. Stress puts us in the fight or flight mode. It releases cortisol, which helps us really unbalance our blood glucose levels. And we have medication and supplements or nootropics and different things that are going on that just isn't allowing our body to work effectively. And if we get that right, another thing that we look at is that we're waking up during the night. We also need to look at the environment we're actually sleeping in. Now, I'm not saying with partners and stuff that you need to sleep separately, but sometimes that, do an ex experiment. Do you sleep better if you're away from your husband or your wife? Because sometimes it might be a case that they might be jiffling when you're sleeping and then they wake you up. And we also look at your body temperature uh, and uh, the room temperature. And there are some tricks you can have to get good, good room temperature things like a chili pad or something to keep your bed at optimal temperature, which will change through the night. But we want to set the environment up right. So between 17 to 20 degrees Celsius is where your body likes to dip down when it gets to sleep. Um, but most people are having like higher room temperatures because it's always cozy and stuff. But it's the opposite of what your body wants to do. The temperature, your body temperature drops in the evening. And we need to replicate that. Um, and what happens when the outside temperature isn't regulated is your body fights against it and ends up not being able to stay asleep. Uh, and then we look into different things like sleep disruptors. I mentioned having the exposure to sunlight. Excuse me. Got something in the eye. Uh, we, we have the exposure to sunlight. And we always hear blue lights. Blue light switches our brain on. It's the false light. It's the sun's light as such. Like a false blue light that comes from our technology keeps our brain switched on. It's also white and green lights as well. So having bright lights in the evening is very, very disruptive to your sleep. So we want to look at this and we want to see where can I lower this? A simple thing that I do, if we are watching TV, I'm not going to lie. Like I'm not going to say, oh, I switched TV off. I'm this 100% optimized person. We'll watch TV. We've got a big TV, like a 55-inch TV. Um, just turn the backlight down. Take some adjusting to get used to, but turn the backlight down. And it's a chore, yeah, to turn it down in the morning or turn it up in the morning if you're watching it or in the evening, switch it down, all that sort of stuff. But it's less of a chore than staying wide awake. Wear blue light blocking glasses. And I wouldn't wear these all the time during the day because we do need exposure to blue light. It's not an inherently bad thing all the time during the day. And when the sun goes down, wear some blue light blocking glasses and you can change into orange or red lenses the later it gets. Again, these do take some getting used to. I'm not going to lie about it. But then we get into the third side of it. And this is when you are waking up feeling knackered. You're literally waking up feeling so tired. And then you go for coffee. Then you go for your screen time. Then you have your shower. Then you get to work. Then you sit at a desk all day. It's not going to be productive to do this all the time because you're waking up, you're then reactive, stimulating your already high cortisol with caffeine. You're then going to be reactive on the screen with this dopamine release, hit after hit of dopamine release. People might then have cold showers, but they have this shower. They then go to work. They then sit there all day rather than have this proactive time for themselves just waking up 10 minutes earlier breathing not just sitting there and having this caffeine fix people are waking up feeling knackered that's the normal routine and then we hear people say i feel great on four hours sleep 
problem with that is that you get most of your deep sleep in the first half of the night. So yes, we do recharge, but there's a lot of things that happens in the last portion of when you're actually asleep, like cellular regeneration, looking after our adrenals, helping our immune system, detoxification, relaying the brain cells and neurons in the brain, really helping your inner health. So yeah, short term, we might feel okay on four hours sleep, but the longer we do it, the further we go, the more we have bad sleep, five, 10 years down the line, we start seeing signs of poor brain health, which then goes further and further into signs of um, dementia. High levels of stress then hits the dementia side of things. And we go and we can get Alzheimer's and even death, as crazy as that sounds. And yes, it's further, further down the line. But right now, we may be seeing these signs that we can do something about. But if we let them build up, it gets harder and harder to sort these things out then we know that seven to nine hours is the most regenerative amount of sleep we need. And that has to be unbroken as well. But yes, you are going to get some regenerative levels of sleep, but the way you actually get good, when we say seven to nine hours, that is an unbroken target. It's all well and good just being in bed for that. But if you're not sleeping straight away, you're waking up and then you're laying staring at the ceiling first thing in the morning. To get that, we're not getting the most restorative levels that we need. Now, ladies do need more sleep than men due to their hormonal balance. It's it's a scientific fact. And what can we do? Uh, sorry, go back there. So this is what we need to look at. What are you doing when you wake up? Looking at your caffeine intake, looking at your routine. And again, most of the times waking up feeling knackered is a mixture of the not getting to sleep or not being able to stay asleep. So usually some of the other things that we've gone on through there is going to be where we would look. But what can you do? Do a behavior order to see exactly where your sleep is at. When and how do you wake up each day? When, what is your first bite or sip of the day? When, what was your last meal or sip of the day? When do you get to sleep? When do you shut off all screens? What time do you exercise? Look at these things and see. Because if you're exercising late at night and you can't sleep, it might just be better to switch your exercise to more cardio-based rather than strength training going to be a bit more optimal that way so what can you do to improve your circadian rhythm you can get light exposure first thing not eat in the first hour so when we wake up our body is still in technical state of sleep and it's just slowly waking up so eating in that first hour is going to throw our systems off a little bit that's not to say that you go and do full intermittent fasting it's just simply not eating in that first hour so get some meditation in go for a walk get some light exposure not eating a meal within three hours of bed. Only fast if you get good, have good blood glucose management. Now, I see a lot of people saying they do intermittent fasting. It's good for your health. It can be detrimental to your health if you have poor blood glucose management. And it's a stage where you get that in check first before you then reap the benefits of potentially or reap the potential benefits of doing intermittent fasting. Really important to get it that way around. If not, you just do more damage longer term. And again, only fast if you had good, good hormonal balance, especially important for women as well. Move first thing in the morning. And you can work on your behaviors. And that might take working with a coach. Like drop me a message if you have questions on that. But work on your behaviors because accountability is going to be super, super key for this. Work on your behaviors, improve your circadian rhythm. Be active in the first half of the day as opposed to the second half of the day when your body is starting to switch off. That's not to say just sit on your butt all for the second half of the day. You can still go for walks, but make most of your harder, intense activities in the early part of the day if your body isn't too stressed to do that hard, active activity. Uh, again, as I said earlier, if you have to train later in the day, put more cardio work over strength training. Don't go and do hard, intense intervals as well in that cardio work. Just steady stuff walking, jogging, cycling. Very, very powerful. Now, doing this talk for the sleep solution, I've worked with, I think over the last three months, I've probably done about 70 different sleep solutions where we have three sections. And these sections, we go through deep questionnaires based on your behaviors, based on your mental health, based on your physical health. And it tells us exactly where we need to focus. So we dive into your sleep patterns, your physical, your mental, your lifestyle, and then we jump on a call. 
which is recorded to go through these questions or go through the answers of this questionnaire. Um, we have this on a one to one basis. So we really find what are the low hanging fruits that you have ready to grab hold of to improve your sleep that don't involve loads of implementation. And that sleep solution is just 99 pounds. And if you are looking for this, you can drop me a message on social media at OJAY Health or go to ojhealth.com forward slash services and you can literally purchase it and book in for your call right there. But overall, look deeper into your health, into why you're not sleeping. Don't just look at sleeping medication. Unfortunately, it seems to be dished out left, right and centre nowadays, which just adds to the problem because it just knocks you out. We then don't get the regenerative levels of sleep. We then don't get the cellular regeneration, the health benefits. Our immune system goes lower. So look at this. Look at your sleep patterns. Look at your physical health. Look at your mental health. And look at your lifestyle. Any questions on this, simply drop me a message. If you want to sign up for the sleep solution, it's just £99. We go through this. And if you then end up saying, actually, Ollie, I want you to have... Um, look full into my health, fully into my health and get one-to-one -one coaching for a minimum of three months. If you go for that and you get the full package, you get that 99 pounds back. So it's a no brainer. You either get low hanging fruit that you can implement and you go away and do it, or you get that money off your actual coaching with myself. But drop me a message on ojhealth.com or ollie at ojyhealth.com and we can talk and book him for your call straight away. Have a great day and thank you for listening.